What up, you gosh darned nerds? My name is Fallout, and today we are going over my ultra-thick guide to Destiny 2 Season of the Splicer. There's a lot to go over, so let's dive right in. The first thing you're gonna do is the intro mission with Mithrax, which you'll get dragged into immediately and really requires no walkthrough because of how very straightforward it is. After that, you will eventually head over to the Helm, which now has a newly unlocked room. You're gonna pick up your seasonal artifact, the Paradrome Cube, from the big-ass Splicer Servitor in the newly unlocked room. Go ahead and get really familiar with that big boy, because you are going to be interacting with it every now and then. If you want a quick guide on which mods on your artifact are worth picking, by the way, I got another video on that already up on the channel, link in the top right corner. Now, another item you're going to pick up is the Splicer Gauntlet. Here's the deal with that. It lives in your quest tab, and you can open it up at any time you like. The main purpose of your gauntlet is to take ether and convert it into key codes. Ether can be obtained by completing playlist activities, public events, and killing enemies anywhere. Definitely take note though, not every enemy you kill will drop ether. In fact, it is fairly goddamned rare. The best way to earn ether by far is to do whatever the gauntlet tells you will drop bonus ether. Trust me. I'm assuming that the bonus ether activity will eventually rotate, but as of day two of season 14, it's been strikes two days in a row, so I don't know. But yeah, TLD are there. Don't rely on killing people for ether, do the bonus activity. Okay, when you've gotten a bunch of ether, you can use the gauntlet to take that ether, 50 to be exact, and convert it into a key code. Key codes are important to have with you when going into the override activity, which I will go over now. Override is the new season 14 PVE activity. Activity. It's made for six players, and if you don't have any friends, you lovable loner, don't worry, it's match made. You're gonna get dropped into a location, and you have to kill a bunch of enemies, all while hacking into a giant Vex terminal. Every enemy you kill will drop big purple moats, kinda like Gambit. Every time you dunk moats into the big terminal, you will bump up the progress bar. While you can dunk moats whenever you want, I would recommend waiting to dunk until you're carrying 10. Reason being is that when you do dunk with 10, you get a free box of power ammo. When you get to a about 33% completion of the activity, you'll be attacked by intrusion detectors, aka big beefy yellow bar boys. Go ahead and kill them. And now begins Operation Hack the Planet. You're gonna see a couple glowing white cubes in the middle of the terminal. Any cube that begins to glow red, shoot it until it breaks. There will be three in total, and they turn red one at a time. When the third red cube is broken, platforms will appear, and you're gonna need to hardcore parkour all the way up as high as you can before facing the terminal and hacking it. After the hacking portion of the event, a portal will open up on the battlefield. I should mention that you don't need to go into the portal, but going in will help you complete the event a little bit quicker. If you go in, you'll go into the Vex network and fight a real quick mini boss who functions like a champion. Killing it will drop a data spike, which you can pick up and bring back to the battlefield and dunk into the terminal. Again, you don't need to do that part, but dunking the data spike will give you a lot of progression, so why the hell not? Really, only one or two of you need to go into the Vex network to take care of that. Everyone else should stay outside and frag out. Rinse and repeat until you've done the little hacking thing three times in a row. After the third hack, a big hole will open up in the floor and you teleport into the Vex network. Now it is jumping puzzle time. The first few times might be a little bit challenging, but there's only a few variations I've seen so far. Eh, you'll get the hang of it. At the very end, you'll fight a boss. It won't be difficult, but it will be damage gated, like you were expecting anything different with Bungie. Anywho, after each damage gate, you will have to fight and kill yellow bar champions, then damage the light cubes which are protecting the boss. The boss comes back out for another fight, rinse and repeat, until dead. Every champion in the boss fight will drop a data spike, which you can dunk into a nearby terminal. That ain't necessary to do, but it will give you the Splicer's Will buff, which I believe gives you a better ability cooldown. Take note, by the way, there is a unique enemy who can occasionally spawn into the boss room and when killed, will drop a bunch of decrypted data. More on that in a minute. As of right now, I don't actually know how to summon or guarantee that creature into the final room to kill it, to give you the decrypted data? Uh, more info when I learn more about it. If I get any information at all, confirmed information about how to bring that enemy into the room, 
I will let you know probably down below in a pinned comment. But anyway, remember earlier I told you to use the gauntlet to convert ether into key codes? Here is why that's important. After killing the boss at the end of Override, you will be given two loot chests. One of them is free for everybody to open up and can give you gear, but the other one you can only open up if you have a key code. The chest you open up with the key code will give you decrypted data, a brand new and fairly important currency, which I'll talk about now. After Override, head back to the helm, go into that new room, walk over to the big boy Splicer Servitor, and open up the Splicer Gauntlet Upgrade icon right in the middle. Familiar sight, am I right? The old do a thing to get currency to upgrade your ability to more efficiently do the thing. The cryptid data is used to upgrade your gauntlet, which in turn will give you buffs and more efficient ways to play override. Real quick, I'ma go over which of these upgrades I like and which I don't from left to right. Code Strider, picking this will allow new platforms to appear in the final jumping puzzle room of override. If you struggle with jumping platforms, I guess take this, but if you want my honest opinion, Eh, don't bother. Why? Well, number one, I think the jumping puzzle at the end of the activity is something everyone can kind of quickly learn to do without dying. And number two, even if you suck ass at jumping puzzles, when any guardian gets to the final boss fight room, you will get brought forward to the boss fight room too. So why bother? It's not like you're gonna get locked out. Override efficiency, good, and what I'm currently upgrading. I like getting more gear, and quite frankly, a few of the other perks on the gauntlet are bad. Deletion exclusion, no, bad. Again, when any guardian gets to the end of the jumping puzzle and override, everybody gets teleported to the boss fight. Even if you die to lasers, who cares? Just respawn up and try again, or wait to get teleported. Bad perk. Ether filter, what I picked is my third option overall so far. Remember what I mentioned earlier, you get the most ether by completing the bonus activity method mentioned on the gauntlet. I had 100 data burning a hole in my pocket, so I went with ether filter, but for now, probably hold off. Halt and open fire. Ammo replenished by ammo crates and override is slightly increased. Eh, not great, but could help you burn through override quicker. The Deathbringer exotic rocket launcher, by the way, has an exotic catalyst now, which you'll probably immediately get after doing one strike or one game of PvP. You could pick Halt and Open Fire as a way to get that catalyst finished quicker if you wanted to. Finally, we have Memory Expansion. Your gauntlet's ether capacity is bumped up, and likewise for the key code capacity. I went with that one first because why not? It's gonna let you stockpile up more key codes and ether, meaning less back and forth between override and needing to do whatever activity you gotta do for more ether. I have no idea right now what the locked out aka corrupted data perks are or even how you get them. More info on that when we have additional info. Still talking about the splicer servitor in the helm, you're gonna notice there's a reputation rank up at the top. You improve that rank by collecting decrypted data, which again, you get from the second chest at the end of override. Another way to get decrypted data though is by completing seasonal challenges, which you can find over in the quest tab. Challenges can reward you with both bright dust and decrypted encrypted data, so there's really no reason to not do them. You can also bust out your season pass goodie bag where you can grab decrypted data troves, aka just a big free pile of decrypted data. Yay! More from Big Servitor Daddy, he's got bounties which only give you XP, which is kinda lame, but XP ranks up your season pass, which can give you more decrypted data, so yeah, do the bounties because why not? Finally, you can get seven new armor mods which are unlocked by bumping up your reputation rank. Each new armor mod is centered around elemental wells, which so far pale in comparison to the hotness of Warmind Cell mods, but Bungo could always buff them or nerf Warmind Cells. So yeah, pick them up. You don't want to be in some FOMO situation where some player figures out a god tier armor mod combo that requires some seasonal mod that you just so happen to not have. Another thing going on in Season 14 is Transmog, aka Armor Synth. The materials in this one might make your head hurt, but don't worry, I got you. First, you're gonna go over to Banshee at the Tower, who will lead you to Ada 1, who's back in her little nook. She'll send you out on a very easy quest, basically head on over to Europa and pick up some science-y doodad equipment. Head back to the Tower, stop really quickly in front of Ada to pose with a random guardian trying to take a selfie with you. Sup, bruh? Put the loom together and Ada will give you a package of five synthweave per class. 
and then she'll walk you through how Synth Weave works. By the way, Synth Weave allows you to create an ornament of any armor piece you've acquired. Now you gotta make an ornament to proceed. Do that by opening up your guardian, scroll down, open up the little transmog icon, pick any piece of armor, and make an ornament. Finally, Ada One will give you Synth Strand, which you can use to buy bounties directly from her. Completing any one of those bounties will give you both XP and 100 Rigid Synth Cord. When you have that, you put that Synth Cord into the loom, then you are rewarded with a Synth Weave for whatever class you're on. Then you use that Synth Weave to make an ornament like she showed you how to do earlier. If you're wondering how you acquire Synth Weave without Ada One just forking it over to you for free, the answer is by killing dudes out in the wild. Massive buzzkill alert though, according to Reddit user Aloni Homie, Synth Strand is not based on kills, it's based on in-game time. Of course. Apparently, even if you're slaying out in-game, you can only get about one Synth Strand every two minutes, so yeah, gonna take a while to get that strand. Anyway, I know that's a lot of talk about currency stuff, here's the TLDR on Transmog. Step 1. Kill things anywhere to acquire Synth Strand. Step 2. Collect enough Synth Strand to buy a bounty from Ada 1. Step 3. Complete that Ada 1 bounty and get rewarded with 100 Rigid Synth Cord. Step 4. Dump Synth Cord into the loom to get one Synth Weave. And Step 5. Get your fashion game on. Now, why don't we talk about leveling? I usually make a separate guide on power leveling in each new season, but I don't really know if I should make a fleshed out one for season 14. The power cap only went up by a smidge. If you guys finish today's video and decide you want an uber in-depth power level grind, I guess let me know by telling me down low in the comment section, or click the like button on today's video, or send me a carrier pigeon with a handwritten note. Your choice. For right now, here is the short version. Some people like using the phrase hard cap. I hate that, and I think it's stupid because it doesn't make any sense, so I won't be using it. The powerful cap, aka how high your level can get by acquiring powerful rewards or powerful engrams, is 1310. Many of us right now are already 1310 from maxing out in season 13, so yeah, good news there. If you're not yet 1310, look around the directory and find any activity with a glowing yellow icon that says it will reward you with powerful gear. The pinnacle cap, which is the highest level gear you can acquire, is 1320. You can only hit 1320 by doing activities that reward you with pinnacle gear. Quick note, in the directory, if you hover over the Deepstone Crypt right now, it'll claim to drop pinnacle gear. That is actually a mistake, which has been confirmed by Bungie. So don't go into Deepstone Crypt if you're looking for pinnacle gear. Another quick note that the Vault of Glass will drop pinnacle gear when it arrives in Destiny 2, which, reminder, happens on May 22nd. If you happen to be around that day and don't plan on day one raiding yourself, you can swing by my Twitch channel, where me and my team will be striving for yet another day one completion, or God willing, maybe even a world's first. If you want to take a stab at day one raiding in Vogue with a team of your own, remember that you only have to be power level 1300 to be raid ready on day one. Meaning, yeah, a lot of you out there are probably already day one raid ready. Season 14 also has a bunch of new aspects and fragments available for you to unlock and tinker around with. If you want a detailed guide on that, my most recent YouTube video covers each and every one. With gameplay footage, mind you, check the link in the top right corner or click the link in the video description below. Another thing currently going on with Season 14 is that the exotic Lost Sectors are now on a slightly new rotation. I'm in the process now of updating my Lost Sector calendar and will let you know when I get the new rotation pegged down. Reminder that on Thursday, May 13th, if everything goes right, the 1310 Lost Sector should keyword should be dropping exotic leg armor, meaning that it could be a fairly easy way to get that brand new exotic armor for each class, which is all leg armor. I will probably be streaming that on my Twitch channel on Thursday, May 13th, so if you're around, swing on by. And that is pretty much it. There's a boatload of new weapons and new weapon perks, but I absolutely want to save all of that for another video because it is a lot to go over. If there's any particular new weapon or new weapon perk that you think is good enough to warrant its own deep dive or wacky loadout or PvP commentary video or anything at all, let me know down in the comment section. Please like today's video if you found it helpful at all, and don't forget to click the big red subscribe button and help me with my oh-so-humble goal of one day becoming the sole ruler of the world. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.